So, settle down, everybody. I know the day is exciting. Uh, we have Renee Ford and um, Yipong Fu from the Smil College of Business. They're both learning designers there, and they'll be talking about social media. And um, I'm going to turn it over to them, so please welcome them. And I'm also here to do the five-minute Time's Almost Up stuff. So. Okay, so he'll keep us on track. So you're going to need amplification. But I'm Renee, and this is Epong. in case you weren't sure. And um, we're excited to be presenting to you some of the things that we've learned in our experiences with um, one of the classes in particular that's a flipped class from the Smila College of Business, Accounting to Eleven. So for housekeeping, as we get started, if you prefer to follow the slides on one of your devices, they're up on SlideShare. If you don't want to copy that, there's a Yammer group that was started that's a public group called Social Network Analysis, and that link is there. So just in case, because there is one slide that you might, um, might possibly have trouble seeing from here. So people are still copying. Everyone have it who wants it? OK. So what we're going to do for this presentation is we're, am I in front of the slides? No, I'm short enough that it's not a problem, right? Is we're going to talk about flip course design. We're going to talk about the challenges of measuring student engagement. That's a real issue, especially when you're looking at a course that's flipped design. I don't know what else we're going to talk about until it comes up. Yes, SNA basics and finding in, in findings and implications of what we found from social network analysis and in that course, accounting to 11. All right, so you have clickers. They're all set up. Yeah, everyone, sh uh, every table should have a one clicker. Yep. So could you answer this question for us? Have you used social media in your courses or for your courses? There's a power button. Turn the power button on. On the bottom is a power button. On, off. But they should be all set to this base. So. All right, so most of you have used social media or are thinking about it. Only 7% haven't, so you're in good company in this presentation. <laughs> I've got to close the poll. See that? I only teach people how to use this, <laughs> right? Yes, I'm trying. There we go. So for the course itself, it's a kind of a unique course as far as not just flipped courses go, but courses in general go. There are two instructors for Accounting 211. They usually have about 1,500 students in the fall, about 750 in the spring, about 150 in the summer. So in the fall, which is the time frame that we looked at this, the social networking through Yammer, there were 26 TAs. They usually have about 30. That's wrong, 30 in the fall and uh, 15 in the spring. And 10 to 20 sections per semester. It's offered year-round. And before they flipped the course, and actually, Wendy was, the, I think, the first designer that sort of made this happen. So this has been a long process of, of making the course go to where it is today. But um, they had an average score, students of 70% of them receiving a C or better. So that's before the flip design last fall. 93.6% of the students received a C or better. So the instructor likes to talk about how the proof is in the pudding. So there you have it. So we want to share with you from the instructor and the student support liaison and TA's point of view. Uh, I think
think, Renee, the best answer to that question is flexibility. And from our perspective, from the student's perspective, is because now the old traditional model expected every student to fit into a box that we decided, mm -hmm. whether that was the time of day, whether that was their learning style, whether that was any number of different factors. But uh, the student was expected to just come to class at this time, be fully prepared, glean as much as they could for an hour and 15 minutes. Can you stay awake for an hour and 15 minutes? In the On a yeah, good no. day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And have that opportunity to get as much information out of this very simple course not. I mean, I think we're rated as what one of the top five on campus in terms of level of difficulty. And it, it just, the old model is just not working. And we, you know, I think you're going to ask me another question a little bit that I think fits in with this, but um, we just weren't working. I mean, some students were struggling, they were, they were working their way through, others just get it. You know, guys like this, you know, they just get it. All right. So those we didn't really have a problem with. Um, because they were just, they had that acumen, they had that desire, whatever it was. But with a service population that we have, which is all across this campus, I think we serve every college on campus. Every college on campus. You know, when you look at it from that perspective, we have students that, they can't even spell accounting <laughs> when they're coming in. Yeah. And trying to help them glean the information so that it, it's useful for them, so we can get them to recognize that this is the kind of stuff that if they have the skill that they're learning in this course, they will be so much more prepared to sit at the table, so to speak, and help make decisions in organizations that they eventually go work for. And without this skill, they really put themselves behind the power curve. They really do. So that's why they did what they did. This is the slide I was thinking you might have difficulty seeing. Was I right about that? <laughs> so I just wanted to show you, to give you a sense of what the course looked like and what happened in the course prior to flipping the course and how that compares with the current model. And so the course is really based on student choice, which ties in nicely with the keynote speaker from this morning, right, that if you have autonomy, you might have better results. And so traditional model was, you know, everything happened in the classroom as far as lecture was concerned. And TA led lab se sessions in the classroom. You know, tasks were described in the classroom. Quizzes happened in class and uh, exams in class. And then students went home to do their homework and then would go back to class and hear the lecture. So that's you know, the, um, the traditional model. With the flipped model, it's, this is a really interesting course in the sense that it's not just that they're watching a videotaped lecture and maybe reading a couple of things. I mean, these students have a full roadmap of all kinds of, almost like a buffet of choices, of th tools that they can use and learning objects to engage them into the content. And so, now with this flip model, the instruction is delivered through um, student practice of course concepts and lab problems outside of, or inside the class. Sorry, I'm, 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 I flipped it in my mind. So they practice stuff in class that they would have done as homework. Um, they can choose any lab or any class session. There are, all students are assigned to a lab and assigned to a class section. But if a student wants to, they can go to every single one. They're allowed to do that. If a student wants to, they can go to none and just connect with the course via web. It's their choice. Um, they're sent out uh, tips, tasks, and reminders that are reinforced in class. Um, exams are given in the testing center. And so outside the classroom, all of these tools that they have the buffet of choices of using are available to them online. They, have, um, they do have TA lab sessions offered online as well as face-to-face -face in the flipped model. Students can ask questions um, in class or lab via email or via Yammer, and they're encouraged to do all of their conversations um, in Yammer. There's my accounting lab that they use to support learning 
the instruction and lab problem solutions are all outside of the classroom use, using screencast software. Social networking is used to reinforce learning and, and to connect the students. Weekly tips and reminders are sent by the student support liaison. They've added a person, which we'll talk about in a second, to the structure of the course. They also have these, like I said, these roadmaps that are online that show them all of these things to do, the things that are optional, extra bonus resources. They have interviews of um, experts in the field showing them the why of why they're learning this and how it's applied and how it can make people successful. It's a unique course because it's a four credit course that combines financial and managerial accounting. And I know nothing about accounting except for that I know that's really hard to do and no other university is doing it. So they've got a lot to cover in a little bit of time. Um, they've, got a, they've enlisted the aid of learning design and the instructor, student support liaison and all the TAs hold office hours outside of the classroom. And again, weekly quizzes um, and a case study is offered as a tool that they take care of outside of the classroom. So the people involved in this are, again, the instructors, teaching assistants, students, the student support liaison who's kind of acting like a course mom, helping to keep them um, on track with the process of the course rather than the content. And then we work with inst instructional designers, Where's Kit? Yeah, she, she's involved in this too. And then with all of the resources of the right group. <coughs> Programmers, multimedia, web team, all of that fun stuff. But it's a challenge when you do this. And one of the challenges is how do you know what's going on when you don't have this happening in the face-to-face -face classroom? So they're going to talk to us about that. Ignore the typo. <laughs> well, I, it's really hard to measure. And here's why. Um, because students can choose. So when we look at participation, because we don't really have good, accurate metrics of student participation in the old model to compare it to the new model. And one thing that we don't know is, is if I go to class, because we have this hybrid model where I am in class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so if the classroom isn't filled, why is that? Is it because students just aren't doing the work? Is it because students are choosing to get their um, learning in another method? Whether that's through the textbook or whether that's through the podcast or whether that's through just going to the, the labs. Because the other thing we couldn't do, the old way that we did it, just to feed back on that, the old way that we did it, labs were a component of the class and the TAs that ran those labs were a component of the class, but not nearly as important as they are now. Okay, so they have so many different opportunities, it's really hard to measure, measure participation other than by results. And I think as we look at it, last fall we had 1,400, we had 1400 students. 1,400 mm -hmm. students. And so the best way that I can measure it, and I, and I guarantee you we've maintained the rigor. <laughs> Just yes. ask any student. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we've maintained the rigor in the course, and so it's not that we've made it easier by any stretch of the imagination, but we've made it easier to be successful. And so when we measure where we were, we were ecstatic in the old model if we had a 70% pass rate. And we use C. Now, some colleges can right. have a some, D. Some would accept a D, but we say but C or better. Because of SMEAL's requirements, we use C or better. Uh, with 1,400 students, 70% was the ecstatic model. 93.6% pass at a C this last fall. In the new model. In the new model. So I look at those. There's got to be participation someplace. Right. Because <laughs> they're not just getting it, right? There's not 93.6% of students that just <laughs> get it. Understand accounting. <laughs> <laughs> right? So somewhere along the line, there is participation. I don't know how to directly measure that, though, other than the results, than the if that makes sense. Yes. But there's got to be more participation. Absolutely. So that's what part of this presentation is going to try to address and show you a new tool. Lots of challenges. And I should say that when he starts his class, the face-to-face 
um, portion of the class. They use poll everywhere. And what he does is he has the students say, what do you want to talk about today? And they chime in what their issues are. And so he just goes with what their biggest needs are. Um, and he kind of has gotten to a point where he can predict what th those things are going to be. So they get to choose what they're going to talk about and what concepts they're going to cover in class. But it's really hard with a class that large to measure student engagement and participation. Um, there is a huge diversity in, that, in a class of, of that size. Of, and we've got students who are, it's a general ed requirement that can be fulfilled for some programs. So students who know nothing about accounting and then students, are, they're going to, that's going to be their life. So broad range of, of abilities and knowledge. And they have to, one of the challenges is that they have to depend on the students doing the stuff outside of class. You know, it's worked. Um, but that's one of the risks you take in a flipped design. Many of the learning objects and tools, they're provided but not required. So it's not like they're going in and saying, OK, we need you know, a spreadsheet. Do you have a question? OK. So we need a spreadsheet of uh, you know, how many responses, how many posts, and we're going to give a grade on that. They don't do that. Um, in class and lab attendance also isn't required. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I was like, what's wrong with this microphone? Me, of course. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I'll just do that. So the, uh, Ken talks, and poor Ken, he didn't realize we were videotaping this interview. So he had just gotten back from the dentist, but I don't think you can tell. Tell me that so I can give him reassurance. They didn't know that he had just had a filling of an hour before this. <laughs> Ken, ignore the typo. I, I think that is the biggest job is trying to figure out what right. what each student needs right. and trying to make sure that we do as much as we can to figure out how do we interact because we take the we take the approach we hate bureaucracies but Penn State's one of the biggest bureaucracies and so we want to make sure that when students have an issue with us that we don't give them a pat or bureaucratic answer but we try to make sure because each student pays tuition or somebody is paying tuition mm -hmm. for that student. And we need to make sure that that student gets the care and attention that they deserve because they are a customer. And so we want to make sure, and I think that is the biggest challenge because we do see, Jane had 4,000 student contacts. We'll see about 2,200 students over the course of the fall, spring, and early summer session, uh, you know, in a course of a year. Um, next year, they could grow by about 400, we're hearing. So, Trying to make that work for 2,200 different students, that's the biggest challenge. When I was in college, you know, 100 students seemed like a lot. <laughs> okay, so Jane talks about how she views the challenges again. And I think, too, um, one of the challenges is um, sort of the old saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. One of the things for us is we have so much presented out there for the students, but we also need the students to have a little bit of internal motivation and self-motivation to use the resources that are there or to know to come forward when um, they have questions or they need help. And so one of the things that we try to do is operate our course a little differently than most courses at the university where you see um, lists of sections with certain times that you might be in class or certain times you might be in labs. In other courses, you have to follow whatever your schedule says. So if your schedule says to be in lab at 8 a.m. on Friday morning, that's your only option. We actually tell our students that they can attend any learning opportunity we offer regardless of what their schedule shows. So that means that a student who knows they'll never get up at 8 in the morning to go to lab could show up at 11.15 when it's a better time for them. So students who their um, schedule shows web only are able to go on Tuesday and Thursday and listen to the instructors in the forum building. Students who have the instructors listed but know that they're doing fine with the web resources are able to only do that. So we try to provide a lot of flexibility in the class to allow students to choose. And then Seth is one of their TAs, and he tells us a little bit about the challenges. Uh, well, I kind of think 
for a TA, it goes off of what Jane was saying, where you have that wide range of students that are coming in and, and asking for help from you and just guiding them on the right path and convincing them that it's really going to help out if they can work on certain things throughout the course and uh, just letting them know that they have a, a multitude of resources that they can access and they need to find what works for them because it's, it's pretty much different for each student of what's going to work for an individual. This is where I turn the mic over to okay. my esteemed colleague. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay. So, and then, so now you, you have some kind of understanding about how this course design and then how we flip the cast. And then, so right now it's kind of like, we, we, we come right back to our instructor and then our own curiosity saying, okay, so how can we major or to evaluate or even assess student engagement or participations in the flipped classroom? So uh, we, uh, we adopt the Yammer uh, discussions into our, our course design. And then so what we are doing now is kind of like uh, to kind of like pulling the data from the, from the Yammer discussion. And then so we have two different set of data coming out. One is the, uh, the old network uh, uh, data. The other is uh, separate TA groups data. And then but there's some limitation for that data set because we cannot uh, count our uh, count for the, some people if they hit like, or even come like a, only have a short, uh, uh, short reply like hi, hey, some some kind of like socially uh, reply to that uh, con uh, conversation feed. So we cannot count in for that because when we uh, first get that data set, which is the, the 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 big Excel file here in the middle, and then so when we do the data cleaning, and then we found that okay, so probably we can only have uh, coming out 567 uh, discussion feed, which is meaningful. So we are using that for our first step uh, analysis and coming out some kind of social, uh, social, social grant in the, in, okay. in like, some, something like, like this. So I was saying kind of like the data preparation and then also the some, some collections kind of like some limitation for for uh, our uh, our project, but it's pretty interesting to see the result, and I, I guess all of you probably eager to see what is coming out here. So first thing, I uh, pick out your I click again, so we will vote again. So saying, uh, let's come like a, some uh, four four gen uh, genetic type of network usually will be seen in the social media. So what kind of like a, uh, what kind of a, a network you are expect to see? after uh, we, we, an, we analyze our data. So let's open that board. And then so now you can, yeah. Just take guess. And if you don't know anything, so you can just hit E or something you think, okay, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't, it should have an, uh, an, another type. So you should be E or something else. So we have lease, okay? So let's go into our real, real results. Okay, yep. Okay, so this is what is coming out. It's pretty similar to what you choose, actually. So however, you, you may think about, okay, so, so we have uh, over 1,000 students, so why this is only 14, uh, 14 uh, 142 stu students engage in that class because think about we are in the free classroom, so we are not required students to fully participate in the online discussions. So only some students, they are much more active or want to ask questions, so probably they will go to that. Less is another part of the qual uh, qualitative analysis we, we will talk about later. And then also you can see, uh, oh, okay, I guess uh, we only prepare for 30 uh, handouts, and then so, in that handout in the bottom part, so we have kind of like some, some definition for each kind of like a key terms in the social network analysis. So if, if, if you are not familiar with social network analysis, less is a good starting point to let you to know what is a node. So node usually, uh, you, you can see node can be some individuals in the networks like you and I. And ages is kind of like a relationship. So like a, if I know Renee, so that, so, the age between me and Renee is one, okay? And then so density is kind of like a, another 
different things here is about how uh, how dense or how close among the, among these or peoples here. So you can see it's, it's not so dense. So uh, so people here is not so close to each other. But uh, based on I I have done over six uh, social network analysis, I will tell you this number is good for online discussion already. And then so. And then, so uh, since we don't have enough time, I will go to much more in important index here. Uh, go back one more here. So the other thing is probably is kind of like a interesting is mesma in and out degree. In in degree and out degree is kind of like a, 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 a little bit different uh, uh, view of ages. So if I know you or if I ask you questions, so I I, I have out degree one to you. But if you ask me questions or you you try to make make connection to me, so there will be the in degree one to me. So the maximum in degree and out degree found is 19. So probably you can take a guess about who is the one who have a highest uh, in degree, who have a, a most out degree. So usually people will will, will guess probably is, is that instructor, is that TA, is that we call the uh, course support liaisons. So we will talk about that later. Okay. And then this is another uh, an animation I want to show to you. So this is based on the time. So we cut in like uh, every 20 days uh, uh, across all the uh, semesters. So you, you can see that you can see how this network grows. Beginning, you kind of ju just have uh, one or two people starting to talk or starting to engage together. But I will say this become much more organic and then out of control from, from our perspective. But you, you can see about how this, how this network grows here. Okay. And then so, but that doesn't tell me anything because we, we only can see, okay, how this network look like and then how many uh, connections they, they make with, uh, among the, this uh, community. But what is the qualitative part? What they are talk about, and then what they what they try to engage to each others. So so this is kind of like a five different type of uh, uh, discussion we found after we do the qualitative analysis. So you can see still close to sixty percent of uh, discussions still rely on some basic course administration or maintenance. So students try to come like asking, okay, when is the next TA sessions? And then, so how I, how I can get the textbook, or, or where where I can download that uh, practice quiz? Okay. So usually students, oh, sorry, I probably I, I hold too close. <laughs> and then, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then so and then, so for the thirty four uh, percent of discussion, they are much more close. Uh, talk about the course content. So that is why we expect students to see how they use in the social media because actually that, that is kind of beyond our, our expectation. We are expect like this generation of students, they were much more putting their effort into social chat. Like, hey bro, how are you? What's up there? But we still found there's a seven, seven percent of students, they, they trying to use that platform as kind of in, uh, engaged to their friend or making new friend or or, or do some social activity layer. But it's good thing to see 34 of this country, they are doing kind of like real focusing on the course content, asking about classification, about some quizzes, some concept, or, or even some, some something they don't know. And then there will be another good thing to, to take deeper look for that. So can we go next? So when we go deeper for that, so we can see if we talk about the course content here, oh, sorry. And then so usually they will have a three different type. And then so all these things is, uh, we are using the NVivo to, to help us to categorize everything. And then, and, and then so uh, these three things is kind of like a, uh, usually TA or, or, or instructor will providing some solution to the student questions. And then but, mo but most interesting things we found is kind of like peers. So it's just like what, uh, what we are uh, talking about recently, like a MOOCs. So MOOCs using a lot of peer evaluation or, or peer feedback. And then we, we saw that or, uh, organically happening inside our own design. So less is good things we, we, we want to see. Okay. And then so this is kind of like another thing is 
we, we talk about how the old network looked like. And then so, but how about if we go into individual, group, uh, individual groups and then we have uh, over 28 TA groups in last semester and we have uh, 26 TAs with different teaching style. So how their, uh, how their group look like in the social network analysis. So pick out your curriculum again. So think about our take a guess and then what type of uh, network inside the TA groups you expect to see. It's like something like A, something like B, something like C, or even not above. Okay, so we have a lot of people think it's C, and then, okay. I didn't ask you to answer C, right? <laughs> okay, anyway, thank you. Yeah, so let's go into that. Actually, we have an O3 type of uh, network we found in those 28 TA groups, but uh, I will say, can click next? Uh, probably you can ask, we have uh, over 50% of uh, TA groups, they are look like this. So they are like uh, aliens inside the, inside the social media. They just say hello and then disappear for whole semesters. <laughs> okay, so, but, 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 that, but that doesn't mean they didn't do anything because remember we are in the free classrooms. So some, some TA, they are much more focusing on doing the real TA session in, on Friday to helping students. And then, but this is another interesting to see, like, uh, okay, this is kind of a different behavior or, in, or interaction or, in, or in engagements TA try to make to the, to the class. Okay, next. And then we have uh, another 42% like leads. So they are kind of like a TA shooting a lot of kind of information to the, to the students. Okay, try to attach all the review documents or a lot of kind of like a solutions for, for students to follow, but there's merely have an interaction among the groups. The TA is still kind of like, like doing another announcement here. And then so that's the second type. That's another 45, uh, 42%. Okay. Yeah, up, up. Okay, thank you. And then we have another eight percent like this, what we, uh, uh, a lot of people guess. It's kind of like, okay, so not only TA doing a lot of a good job in the try to engage students in social media, but they also have some kind of like organic hap discussion happening inside the groups. And then, but keep, keep, keep in mind, less doesn't mean a productive way to, to kind of teach TA session in the, uh, it, it, in the uh, free classroom because every TA, every student have a different needs and different approach to teach students. So probably less is the next stage for the social network analysis to see much more beyond that. So not only take about, uh, th think about some social network analysis index like uh, some in degree, out degree, or like something like this, see the patterns there. We, we need to go much more deeper to understand more about how this engagement happening and then so Let's go into the next one. So this is some implications we found, and then I will give my mic to Renee. Okay, so even though only, what was it, 148 students were engaged in the network, it was almost 800 students who were logged into Yammer. So there was a lot of quiet presence as well. Whether they were active or not, that was, that was what um, we were talking about, but we learned from this a few different things, and one is that the first month is key for course engagement. Probably not surprising there. And that students needed help with the course process in this design, especially because they're not used to be give, being given this much autonomy 
in any of their classes. So it takes a long time to get them to believe that they're telling the truth, the instructors, that is, that they really mean it, that they have the choice to engage in these things. So the process um, champion being the student support liaison was, was just as much, in, uh, actually more um, of the conversations were around that as, as they were around the content. And more discussion doesn't necessarily mean more productive discussion. The social media helps the students, though, feel connected, more connected to their instructional team as well as to their peers. And we can use SNA to, SNL is tonight, we use SNA to measure student engagement and provide data for the evaluation phase of the course uh, design. So we're going to use this data in a lot of our courses, not just this one, to, to sort of think about what, you know, what can we do to tweak this? What can we do to improve? Now uh, Ken, Jane, and Seth are going to talk about that power of choice in the course. No, I mean, really it's down to students are able to find the, what fits with their learning style. So if they do best watching a lecture on video where they can pause it, stop, start, rewind, they have an opportunity to watch the videos that Ken has created. If they want to do that and then go and hear it live, they can also be in the classroom on Tuesdays and Thursdays where they can have the instructors go into greater detail about the material. They have um, TAs that they can work with on Fridays. The TAs are either live or there are virtual labs through Adobe Connect that they can attend and work with. Those TAs are helping to prepare the students um, for quizzes that they take each week. Then the students, again, have opportunities for um, being back to a video to get themselves at exam readiness level with the material. And they can, again, use only the video tools if that's what's working best for them or support that with what's happening in the classroom with the instructors as well as the textbook. We use My Accounting Lab through Pearson products, which allows the students to do a lot of practice. So one of the beautiful things about the course is the wide range of choices. One of the difficult things in the very beginning, though, is for students to see that range and find what the right combination is for them to be successful. Okay, so we're flipping this classroom, and we want to know what you want to know. Thank you for your question, TK. So, and then so actually when, when I run the uh, social network analysis uh, software and then I kind of chunking by, by day, by month, and by weeks. And then so what I found kind of like a, uh, this is every two weeks and then data. And then so we have a over four months, so which we have a eight different point of the, uh, from the anim uh, animation. So you probably can see the first month to the second month, which is two to three, friend, more and more connections and then more and more no coming out. And then so most students starting to jump into the discussion and then but like uh, less is kind of like, like a tipping point in the end of first month but less start to, to drop. And then uh, I, I didn't show that uh, chart here because we don't have enough time to do that. But I, I can tell you based on what we found and around the data analysis here, the first, the, the end of first month and then is, is what what the tipping point is. Thanks. And thanks, DK, for getting us that data. Thanks. <laughs> Quick question. What software did you use to do all this analysis? Okay. You might as well hold on to that. <laughs> so, so I used two. And then so uh, I used, uh, first thing I used uh, Jiffy, which, which is open source uh, social network analysis tool. The other is UCINet, and then I, I, I'm much more familiar with UCINet, and this is my first time to use Jiffy, because Jiffy provides much more easier way to visualize the data. Just but J -I -F -F -Y, uh, G E P H I, yeah, Jiffy. And then UCINet provides much more comprehensive uh, analysis for that. We can do more analysis for that, and then even adding more 
complex uh, element or parameter estimation into that. So, but for, for current project, because we, we uh, um, as I said in the beginning, as a limitations, we, we can only retrieve some, we call the meaningful discussion from Yammer. And then our next step, our next step is going to much more, going to much more deeper, even try to count for the like or some kind of like a, some non-meaningful social chat into our analysis. Does that answer your questions? Okay. Somebody else over here have their hand up back here and then we'll go over here. Was there any correlation between how engaged they were in the social network and how they performed in the book? Yeah. Do you want me to uh, I can tell you we, we have not gone into that phase yet, but that is what we, we try to do. Because for now, uh, we are going to do some kind of like second, uh, uh, secondary data analysis, so we cannot try to align student performance and, and, and also in their engagement. And we, we have not tried to run the IRB for the next phase yet, but that is a good suggestion. Thank you. And over here, uh, Dan? For this particular? No, not yet, but um, we'll put that on the Yammer group as soon as it's ready. Um, so we can share that with you. Other questions? Thoughts or ideas about social network analysis or flip design? TK. Okay, so this is another part of social network analysis. So what we're doing is kind of like a retrieve the raw data from from the big Excel sheet, and then you help us to 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 export from the Yammer. And then what we do is kind of like dump into Envivo, and then the, the next thing is kind of like a manually to to code it. And then so uh, this is kind of a much more qualitative research approach, kind of like code it uh, as a kind of like a f five or six different things, and then run the frequency tally. And then, uh, and then to see how much or how many discussions fall into each categories. And then, do you want to answer that? Okay. <laughs> okay, so for the purposes of, of this presentation and and what, what our objectives were for this, we looked at what was going on in Yammer because that's one of the big question marks is, you know, what's happening, how can we measure what's happening in there? And we had data to be able to measure that with, um, so those are interesting questions to consider when, when we look at the other pieces of, of the puzzle, um, but we haven't analyzed those yet. For the next one, yes, but we did not for this. Did we have to submit our, our, for IRB approval for this? Yeah. So let me answer that. So and then so and then less of the things I I have not talked about in the limitation here. And then but thank you for for your asking. And then actually the uh, the the unit I analyze is not people. It's a it's about discussion fee. So we are kind of like using some secondary data approach to see the whole data set. It's not about who speak what, and then it's about what group of people speak of what. So it's kind of like thinking of, uh, we are not doing much more like close to other, some kind of like a people in, uh, people's reaction or, or, or feeling. We are, we are seeing their conversation, uh, conversation as a group, but we know that if we want to go deeper to do quality analysis, we, we need to do IRB approval for that. But thank you, yeah. Thank you, for thank you so much.